In this example, we're going to look at how we can use a graphing calculator um, to determine the graphs or the approximate graphs for each one of these functions in homework chapter 3.5. So I've showed you how to use, you know, your TI-89 or TI-92 or whatever, TI-84, whatever graphing calculator you may have. Um, but honestly, a better program at least for graphing functions and, and accessibility is just to use the Desmos online graphing calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type X caret shift 6 4 and then I'm going to say plus 2 X shift 6 3 and then minus 4 and it's going to give me this graph. And so what I'm able to do is kind of zoom in on it and I can move it around. And I want to pick each one of, one of these graphs that look the most like this graph. So it's not going to be this one because this one goes concave down, whereas this one goes concave up. Uh, this one looks similar, but we see the lower point is on the left side and the higher point is on the right side. So this is almost like a mirror image. This one once again goes concave down, so it appears that graph D is the correct graph, that it's the closest graph to the actual graph that we have. Okay, now let's take, I'm going to do parentheses, and let me just delete this out. I'm going to do parentheses 2x, that quantity, and then I'm going to divide by x plus 3. And let's see what we get. So, um, you know, when we look at this graph right here, let me see if this allows me, um, yeah, this allows me to define my window size. So this is, um, what, negative 7? Uh, 1, 1 by 8, 12. And so let's see what we got. We're going to plug in, say, a negative, a negative 7 here. And then a positive 1. And then for my Y, I'm going to plug in... Um, I'm going to plug in, um, what, a negative 8? Is that right? A negative 8. And then a 12 right here. Okay. And <clears throat> this 1 and this 2 represents how many, the, the distance between the tick marks. So if you see negative 7, 1, Negative 7 is the lower bound for your x axis. Positive 1 is the upper bound for your x axis. Negative 8 is the lower bound for your y axis. And positive 12 is the upper bound for your x axis. And then these tick marks here show you that on your x axis, each one of these tick marks is separated by a value of 1 and on your y-axis each one of these tick marks, tick marks are separated by 2. Okay, So that's what this 1 here means and what this 2 here means. So it just shows you that this right here is point 0 on your um, x-axis and this point right here would be over 1, this would be over negative 1, over negative 2, over negative 3, over negative 4, over negative 5, over negative 6, over negative 7. This right here point would represent 0 on your y-axis. One tick down would be negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. Up would be positive 2, positive 4, positive 6, positive 8, positive 10, and positive 12. So that's what these three numbers tell us and it looks like graph A is the closest to this to this graph um, it looks like that that it is when you look at this it looks like that this graph is closer than any of these other graphs 
okay? Uh, so it's not just the graph that it's asking for because it looks like all of these graphs um, have this what's called a hyperbola shape that this one is the correct graph within this viewing window okay and if you wanted to go in you could evaluate each one of these so let's just do one more um, and I'll just show you this looks like. So I hit negative 3, I'm going to hit tab, and then I'm going to hit 1, and then I think if you hit a step of 1, yeah, a step of 1 actually is this third number, and then here I'm going to hit 4, tab, 12, step 2, and when I do this, you can see that this does not this graph does not appear in this window. I would have to zoom out before I would get that. So it appears that all four of these graphs are the actual graph of this function, but it also wants you to be able to define the window size. So let me do one more just so it's clear. So I'm going to plug in for my C graph, I'm going to plug in negative 7, hit tab 1, step 1, and then down here I'll hit negative 2, tab 12 2 and you can see that this one it doesn't quite work because you can't see the x-axis on our Desmos graph which you can see the x-axis so you would actually have to move it down a little bit before you could see that so a appears to be the correct one so let's suppose D had been the correct one. You would have had to have tried all four of these before you would have found that. So we just got lucky with this one. Okay. All right. Now let's use a more advanced function in Desmos. So it wants us to graph this function. So it's going to be 4x shift 6x squared minus 2x minus 5. Okay. And I'm just going to pull this up where I can see where it crosses um, the x-axis. Because remember, we want to evaluate all zeros. So the zeros is where the function actually crosses the x-axis or where x is actually equal to zero. So if I type in, say, x equal to zero right here, um, I mean, I should say y equals zero. You see how we get this purple line here? So that shows where y is equal to 0. And then if we click this, what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to see that it crosses the x-axis at negative 1.396 and at 0.896. And that's where you get these two answers to. So it says use, to, use commas to separate the answers. So you would plug in each one of these. And uh, let me make sure, okay. So I got lucky, but I should have put negative 2x here, okay. And so let me see. So I've got 4x squared minus 2x minus 5. So my two answers are 1.396 and negative 0.896. So I had I had this wrong, but I kind of got lucky because it just it basically just made it a mirror image, and so all that was wrong was my positive and negative. But you do have to be aware of that because if I'd have plugged in my first answers, it would have been wrong. So my two answers are negative 0 0.896 and then. 1.396 and you would separate those by a comma and I don't think it matters what order you were to put these in as long as they're separated by a comma and rounded to three decimal places because it says round to the nearest thousands okay so now uh, let's plug in these values let's see if it'll let us do uh, variables other than X I do not think it will but we'll see. And it's not going to. Okay. 
So it says, no, that's not going to work. So what you're going to need to do is substitute an S with an X, like this. And so we're going to get X cubed minus 2X squared. Okay. And then that's going to be equal to, this is simply just going to be Y equal to 3, like this. Okay. So we have these two functions. We have this s cubed minus 2s squared, which is x cubed minus 2x squared, and that's going to give us this graph right here. And then we have y is equal to 3, which is going to give us this horizontal line. And we simply want to see where s is equal to... Um, this side of the equation is simply equal to 3 and so what we can do is you just click on one of these and when you do see how it brings up this little gray dot if you click on that it shows us that at 2.486 uh, the function is equal to 3 so that's where this 2.486 works or comes from now I'm going to show you how you would do this on a graphing calculator so you would just plug in S, but we'd have to use X. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say X to the third minus 2X squared. And that's going to be equal to Y is equal to 3. And then if I graph this, diamond F3, I'm going to get a graph that looks like this and then it's going to come across here like this. And so now if I go to F5 and go to math, uh, we're going to figure out where the intersection is. So I'm going to scroll down to 5 and hit enter. And it says pick my first curve. So it's on this curve right here. Pick my second curve and it picks this line. And then it says my lower bound and I'm going to say okay well this looks good. So it looks to the left of this. And then my upper bound, I'm going to have to move over here to make sure that um, the actual solution is less than my upper bound. And I hit enter, and it's going to grind just a moment. And it says, okay, the answer is 2.48558, and we want to round to the nearest thousandth, so that's going to be 2.48 and six and that's where that comes from so that's how you would solve it on a graphing calculator okay so that's how you use a graphing calculator and kind of um, analytically or numerically uh, solve these types of problems